Hey guys, welcome back to the Creator Club career mode here on FIFA 22. Chelsea, to start things off today, it's not going to get much easier, but we showed signs of improvement with our tinkering tactically in the last episode, and I'm hoping to keep that going today. Thank you continually for all of your great support here on the channel with this content. Do continue to drop the video a like if you enjoy. Make sure you subscribe to the channel as well so you don't miss out on more. Tick that notification bell and ensure, of course, that you're following me on Twitter. Uh, down on the link below, I have some, uh, some items to give away on social media from Xbox. So if you're intrigued and interested in winning yourself some FIFA points, a copy of the game or a uh, game pass, etc., then do make sure you can follow me on Twitter and take part in the giveaways. They're ongoing as we speak. Thank you again, of course, for your continued feedback. You guys mentioned the uh, the home fans leaving early. Uh, have I noticed it and can I show you it? I haven't noticed it, mainly because I've been concentrating so hard not to lose each game and trying so hard to actually concentrate what's going on on the field. I haven't actually paid attention to what's going on off the field. But if I see any of it, or cutscenes, etc., when we inevitably lose a game at some point over the next couple of episodes, probably today, uh, then I'll, I'll show you it so you can see kind of home fans leaving the ground. Our home games today are Tottenham, which we'll almost certainly lose, and Crystal Palace, which I'm hoping to get some points from. I've tweaked the tactics even more so with regards not just the formation, but the way that we build up play. So we may see further improvements still. We have a game in hand at the bottom of the table currently, although it is Chelsea, so don't get your hopes up too much. The... <laughs> The run for the win, the hunt for the win, is not just on for us, but Brentford too, as they are also yet to win a game so far in the Premier League this season. They've got four draws. We've got two. One of them came against Brentford yesterday with a late equaliser from Hyde, and we're hoping to replicate that, if not more so, almost solely in the game against Crystal Palace, but we'll see what we can do against Chelsea and Tottenham. Hopefully, these tweak tactics will work really well for us. I'm not going to waste any more time. I'm going to jump straight in and hopefully we can pick up some points, plural, today. Chelsea with Eduard Mendy in goal. Aspi, Reese, James, Thiago Silva, Malang, Saar and Ben Chilwell at the back. N'Golo Kante and Jorginho in the middle with Ziyech, Lukaku and Christian Pulisic out wide. Uh, the feedback has been passed on with regards player lineups not necessarily being exactly as they should be. We have to remember we're still in the early access period. I imagine a day one patch will fix... Things like that with like Aspi at right wing back and Reese James at right centre back. They should be the other way around. We saw an instance against Brighton on the opening day where similarly the right wing back and the right centre back should have been the other way around. I imagine that'll be fixed come full launch. So don't panic about it. Don't worry. It's nothing to get caught up about. It's still early access at the end of the day. And the day one patch should fix all of those minor little bugs that we see. So let's crack on here away from home at Stamford Bridge. Another of the... Top sides in the division standing in our way. We've lost to Liverpool. We've lost to Arsenal. We've lost to Leicester. No, we drew with Leicester. Oh, we drew with Leicester. Oh, I almost forgot about our first point at Premier League level against our rivals. But can we do anything now with these tweak tactics against Chelsea? We're already showing some good build-up play here. And if I can lay this in front of Wills and then quickly get it into Williamson and get the shot away towards the near post, we could have had an opening chance. We did have an opening chance. But Thiago Silva got a very good block on it. Oh, but mistake by Chelsea at the back. Williamson needs to show some strength. Here's Hyde. Deflection. Oh, and wide of the target. Mistakes at the back from Chelsea. We've got the nervous, boys. We've got the nervous. Eaton with the delivery. Willemson could be up. It's going to fall and Kante will clear away. Burn it. Cross to Verlinden. Players like Verlinden. And on the other side as well. Scale. I'm going to need to replace sooner rather than later. It's wing-back signings that I'm looking for initially in the January transfer window. If you guys have suggestions, then do leave them in the comments section for me now. Both... With regards permanent transfers, bearing in mind we only have about £15 million available to us, and potential loanees as well. Nice interception there by Burnett. So that's the main area of concern for me at present, to try and strengthen defensively, as that has been our weakest area so far this season, as you well know. And if we can stay, oh, could save by car, more solid defensively, then when we are scoring the occasional goal, it should hopefully lead to either a point if we 
do end up conceding and only end up conceding one or potentially a couple of 1-0 wins if we can find them. Good save by Carr again as Chelsea continue to play through the middle. Ziyech will take the corner and loft it into the middle this time rather than playing it short. And we should win that header. We haven't. Lukaku! Trying to replicate his inner Richarlison, but wide of the target this time. Down the line. Finding Eaton. Trying to get the mess out of him in a wider position so he's more involved in the play because a lot of teams congest the central areas. And hopefully we can work it out wide, get around the outside of teams and then maybe find some crosses into the box. So at the minute I find myself almost working it the way the AI do without crossing. Bit of space here for Wills. The shot's on target. It's saved by Mendy. Decent effort, that. You guys also actually... Uh, not necessarily to my surprise, but to my liking, you guys are really enjoying the relegation struggle, which is fantastic. It's so rare on YouTube, at least, for content to be made in this manner. A lot of the times, and I'll be honest, I did contemplate it at the beginning when we were really struggling. A lot of times you see if someone is struggling like this, they'll be like, oh, I'm just going to tweak the sliders and make them slightly easier. So uh, we end up, you know being safe at the end of the season and not getting embarrassed by getting relegated. But we're not doing that in this save. We're cracking on. And you guys are thoroughly enjoying the fact that I genuinely might get relegated this season. What we might do if I get sacked? Uh, not sure. We'll have to wait and see, <laughs> we'll have to wait and see uh, what happens in that regard. Maybe this... You're not given a penalty for that! Oh, ref! Don't do that to me! Lukaku's stronger than that. We've just given him a little nudge! Oh, I'm not sure about that. I'm really not sure about that. Romelu Lukaku from the spot to give Chelsea a 1-0 lead. There's no stopping that. I feel hard done by. That is against the run of play. Jorginho, Lukaku. Wild from Romelu. Really wild. Expect him to have a bit more composure than that. His penalty was really good. That was not. This is a good move. To keep this going. Willemson's calling for it through that gap. And he's looking to get around the outside of Thiago Silva and forces the save out of Eduard Mendy. How much better are we playing with these tactical tweaks? Only behind due to a contentious penalty. Keep that. Oh, I thought for a minute it was flying towards Preser at the back post. It wasn't. It just went straight up in the air. And Edouard Mendy claims quite comfortably. 55 minutes played here so far. We are holding our own at Stamford Bridge. I'm very proud of the performance we've put in thus far. We just need to keep that up. And maybe we might be able to find a point. Although it's not been easy to get the ball past this defensive line. And Edouard Mendy appears to be in top form so far today. But this is building well again. Williamson just needs to show some strength. She's done nicely. Wills and out wide. And back. Just trying to move the defence about a bit to try and find a, some space, but <laughs> there isn't any at all. Hyde will look for a man in the middle. It can get there! And Mendy gathers again. Oh, SP trying to show some pace there. Oh, it's just going to reach Lukaku. Oh, lovely ball. Pulisic! Flags up! Flags up! I thought that was game over. But no, the Lino's got his flag up. Pulisic's still celebrating. He's not yet realised now he has. But it was offside. Lukaku did the right thing there, I think, in playing the pass. Although he could have perhaps burst into the box himself. It had opened up slightly for him, but you can see. Definitely Pulisic offside. Lukaku going off now as they bring on Timo Werner. Yikes. Lukaku's quick enough. But when you've a lack of pa oh dear, when you've a lack of pace in your backline, having Pulisic and Timo Werner sprinting at you, that's scary. That's really scary. Here's Ziyech. Okay, now it's <laughs> now it's game over. Chelsea two, uh, CFC <laughs> Chesney Football Club uh, nil. That was uh, top draw by Ziyech into the top corner. Ziyech, Werner. Ball is probably going to end up out wide right there. The no, they've gone central. And now here's Christian Pulisic through to Timo. Okay, they're deadly now. Timo Werner making a hell of a difference. A quick fire double. And we are uh, out of it. 
to team over. And he got two men on the far side. Pulisic could have used one. He's gone through there to Ziyech. Nice tackle by Uwe Martin. And we'll get rid of it. We'll flick that on, will we? No. Angolo Kante wins the header against Willemsen. That was poor on his part. Here's Angolo to Timo. Nice interception by Uwe Martin again. The German doing the work back there. Ah, oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, it's a lovely through ball. And there's a fourth. Brilliant. Game over. <laughs> 93rd minute. And 4 0. Biggest defeat of the season so far. Final whistle sounds. And. Uh, Mm, one of those, I think. We played exceptionally well until the second goal went in and crumbled. Stamford Bridge was falling down, but not for them, for us. But you can see by the match stats, the way we played was so much better. Loads of the ball, chances created. Our XG was 2.2, which is astronomically better than anything we've created so far this season. Do that again against Crystal Palace... And we might be able to pick up a win. Wow. Liverpool hammer West Ham by five goals to two. Spurs do the same to Everton by four goals to one. Some big scorelines today in the Premier League. We'll try and keep morale up. Because um, some of it is going to be... Uh... Ah, no. Wrong one. Wrong one. Yikes. <laughs> some of it's going to be quite hard to maintain with form as bad as it is. But we have to stay strong. We absolutely have to stay strong and try and maintain some form of positive atmosphere in the... Uh in the camp I'll try and deal with some of the uh, the negative morale in the squad by maybe offering out a small pay rise to some players I don't know whether that's the answer really Vickers I would like to send him out on loan uh, that is just a short term loan from January banging that's exactly what we want for him that hopefully will go through Vasquez is saying thank you for the first team football thank you sir as well and Mr McGee wants to play it wasn't an easy decision I might give him a game though against Palace because uh, scale's been decent, but it's not like either of our wingbacks have properly impressed and absolutely are first names on the team sheet. So I'll, I'll give McGee a game and we'll, we'll change the maybe one or two more positions in the squad for the game against Palace. But I don't want to change too much because we played really well in that last game and I want to try and replicate that performance against Palace if we can. Back at home as well, of course. I'd love to get... Well, I guess it doesn't really matter where the first win comes from. But I'd love the first win to come at home if we can get it for those that have stayed faithful to this squad. Showing their support week in, week out. And fingers crossed, we can reward them for that support with some points. Crystal Palace then with Waita in goal. Joel Ward, Martin Kelly, Mila Vojevic and Tarek Mitchell. Tarek Mitchell, Michael Elise, Sheku Kiyate and uh, Jaru Riedewald. Zaha, Schlup and Raksaki. Raksaki up top. Benteke on the bench. Odson Edward on the bench, thankfully. Jesus Christ, I don't want to play against Odson Edward. Right. This is our ground. This is our time. Let's get a win. Schlup up against McGee, who gets the start. On the back foot from the off. Raksaki made his Premier League debut for Crystal Palace. In the Premier League against Chelsea earlier this season in real life. Only appearance he's made to this point in first team football over the bar. No car with the save. So I'm not sure how much of a threat he'll be. But when they've got people like Benteke and Odson Edouard to call on from the bench. Even if he doesn't have that good a game. They've still got plenty of options to try and score goals in this fixture. Jeffrey Schlup working the ball out wide to Joel Ward. Trying to... Not be too hasty with my uh, uh, defending. Oh, what a header! How's that gone in then? Michael Elise signed from ooh, QPR or Reading? Might have been Reading. QPR was Ezzy, wasn't he? I need to see a replay of that. Is it, just, is it just the power on it? Or the fact that it's been headed down into the ground? Oh, the keeper's unsighted. He can't see it till the last minute. He's dived over the top of it. Questionable goalkeeping is rare for Zachary Carr. But that was questionable. Not the start we needed in a game like this. Out wide to Zaha. And Ward and Zaha again. Nice little back heel. Schlup's tuck narrow. It's an excellent ball out to Wilf. Try not to press too quickly so that they just make one turn and get past me. That has been an issue for us so far this year is just keeping up with offensive play. Raksaki, oh, 
just cut me apart, Jeffrey Slup. On his own in the middle, we just don't have good enough defenders. We quite simply don't have good enough defenders. They they just don't track the runs. They just they just don't mark well enough. There's always someone free in the box. Our defence is shite. Schlup is in behind on the left-hand side. They're looking to score a third before half-time here, Crystal Palace. Mitchell, Schlup. Brilliant stop. Brilliant stop by Zachary Carr. He's furious at his defenders. I'm starting to get quite furious as well at the fact that... Oh, he's hit it straight at Carr rather than into the corner. At the fact they just don't mark anyone. <laughs> they, just, they just... They don't. They just stand there and look... We don't have the quality of defender we need. Or, because they're all so slow, they just can't keep up with the position. Oh, it's handball. They can't keep up with the positional change of all of the various different forward players that our opposition are throwing in towards the box. Milivojevic looks like he's going to take this. Does, and it's superb. Into the top corner in the 50th minute of the first half. We're 3-0 down. We might well see fans start to leave the stadium now. And I don't blame them. McGee, driven out wide. And Hyde inside. Preyser, Wills. Options opened up here to play in Eton. And Verlinden is arriving. And there's Eton again. This is good from us. Wills. Oh, it'll drop free. Oh, I couldn't quite squeeze it to Verlinden. And now we're going to get caught on the counter. Pace is what we really struggle with. We might have a little bit of tackling talent with the two centre-backs but even they aren't very quick there's an offside so the defence is the obvious is the defence the obvious standout place where we need to improve because not like we're scoring goals at the other end either it's just a, a sheer lack of quality everywhere in this team some players are decent like the Linden not the Linden sorry like Eaton like Willemson but they're just not playing in a team that's good enough to help them make the most of their abilities with 10 minutes to go here we are crumbling to a humbling defeat against Crystal Palace a game that I assign such importance to in my mind and unfortunately we just have been outplayed from front to back McGee across to Wills and Eaton spun well in the box maybe defenders marking me well Linden back to Eaton. Space here for Vasquez. And then Wills. Oh, straight at the keeper. Ah, the, probably, arguably, the best chance we've had all game to score a goal. But he's just not taken it very well at all. Fired straight at Vicente Waita. And, yeah, that was, that was just quite simply not good enough. For the first time, I felt like we weren't up to scratch in that game. Against Chelsea, I felt like we did enough to arguably, at 1-0, still be in the game and be confident that we might be able to get ourselves something from it. But it's tough right now. It's really tough here at the club. We've got to keep our morale high, though. I've got to keep my morale high. We've got to keep the players' morale high. And we're just adding to uh, our player's ability here. You guys recommended in the comments that if I set a winger's position change to the other side, they actually train in better ways than one of their growth dynamics. So, as such, I've trained uh, Leo Hyde here as a left winger, and then you say just don't, don't confirm the change. So, for now, I'll leave it like that and hopefully he can improve a little bit more. He's up to 67 rated, but with Brentford still searching for their first victory. We're still not the only side in the league that haven't won a game. We are conceding a hell of a lot of goals, though. And we're not scoring many either. Ten goals in 12 games for us and for Brentford. But three of those came against City, so it's seven goals in 11 games. It's a painful time at the bottom of the table. It appears that ourselves and Brentford, my former team... Neither are cut out for Premier League football this season. I'm close to being resigned to relegation and to having to rebuild. I was prepared for that when I started this save. Purposefully selecting a side that 
with three star and genuinely not that good. I was hoping to be perhaps a little bit more competitive than we have been and pick up the occasional victory. But for now, we're just going to have to crack on, try and earn what we can, where we can, and hope to not get <laughs> hope to not get sacked. What I might try and do, actually, is try and appease the board in every other area that they've got set for me right now. So if we can... If all we fail to do is keep the club in the league... Because our manager rating at the minute is 84. If we can do the youth development, if we can do the brand exposure, if we can do the financial and the domestic success with regards to the FA Cup, then we could hopefully keep our job. Even if we do get relegated. So... Fingers crossed that's what will happen because I do think we'll get relegated but we're going to try and grow as best we can throughout the course of the season and still make the most of it. We want to enjoy our time in the Premier League even if it is for the time being to be short-lived. And Tottenham, Hugo Lloris between the six. 4-3-3 for them. Emerson, Davinson, Sanchez, Christian Romero and Harvey White. Hoybier, Harry Winks and Deli Alley. With Lucas Moura, Harry Kane and Steven Bergwijn up front. Human Son on the bench. Tangi and Dombele on the bench. Ryan Sessegnon, Dane Scarlett, some other youngsters there too. Giovanni Lo Celso could do something from the midfield for them. This one it feels like it's probably going to be similar. But we will continue to fight. I will never give up. Here's Bergwijn going for it. Early doors. Wow. That's what the W stands for. It stands for wow. Stephen Bergwijn. Unbelievable. Takes a touch, sets himself up and releases an unstoppable rocket. That's insane. What a way to start the game. Back inside to Preysa. I'm evidently just going to have to be more patient with my build-up. Against Chelsea, I was I played such slow football, only playing the right pass at the right time. Against Crystal Palace, because we went 1-0 down early doors, I lost all my composure and started to try and force things through. I'm going to make a concerted effort not to do that in this game. I'm not going to try and force things through gaps that aren't there. I'm not going to try and ensure that I create the chance right there and then. If I can just work something and earn yourself a penalty perhaps from a handball from Christian Romero then maybe you might be able to get something from the game I've got to tuck this away though, we have to score the penalty, is his arm up? It is certainly is, and a penalty given and justly so <sighs> score the pen no! Oh, for Christ's sake! <laughs> oh, my God, don't score a goddamn goal! Uh, oh! I am Lionel Pessy! What is happening? Can't score a pen to save my life. Oh, God damn it! Scale. Inside to burn it. There's Presser. Not Presser, it's Vasquez. Forward there to Eaton, who spun Emerson really, really well. Then has not much in the way of support. Vasquez. Wills. You see, Hyde has tucked in here. Give that there. Then look for Willemson. Oh, and around the corner. Wills! Goal! Goal for Chesnight FC! We might not score from the penalty spot. We do score from open play. Level against Spurs! Come on! Oh, every single goal that we're scoring in this save feels so rewarding. The team are not good enough. Goalkeepers are really good on FIFA 22, which I thoroughly enjoy, by the way. Oh, yes. Back on level terms. Come on. Game on again. Yes. Yes, in-game Chesnoid. Yes. To Delhi, I'm worried about H. She might well understand. Delhi Ellie tackled, and away we come. <laughs> it does look pretty good for the counter attack, Derek, but that's what I'm worried about. <laughs> Making a mistake and ruining a counter attack opportunity, to be fair, we haven't made a mistake. We've just taken ages to get the ball forward, but that's because I don't want to just rush a pass with players that can't actually pass that well. 
and then not giving the ball away. So Tottenham have got men back, but we still have possession, which is the most important thing. Wills looking for Hyde. It's a lovely ball. And Wills is inside again. Oh, but Deli Alley tracks back. Playing the way we played against Chelsea again. Slow, calm, composed possession football is what will see us make the breakthrough. It's worked for us to earn a penalty. I missed. It's worked for us to score a goal. And hopefully it will work for us just to keep the ball away from the opposition and stop them scoring quite so much. Playing it about nicely here, Tottenham. This is dangerous. Hopefully Harry Kane doesn't have much pace, but Bergwijn's in. Oh, they've squared it. Car saves. Not just the ball, but my bacon. Oh my God, Lucas Moura. I forgot how quick he was. <laughs> just arrived next to me. He's done the same again. Verlinden to Wills and Verlinden again. <sighs> Tottenham playing well, but we're not playing that badly ourselves again. Putting in a Chelsea level performance. At least the first half of the Chelsea game, at least. Till we went 2-0 down level performance. But on this occasion, we've scored a goal. Left stick dribbling this year doesn't feel as strong as it was last year. It might be because my players don't have the dribbling stats to be that good. But I do feel like left stick dribbling is worse this year. I don't know whether that's a purposeful change by EA or just something that's noticeable with lower rated players. But I feel like I just get bundled off it when I'm left stick dribbling a lot easier than previous years. You guys will have to let me know what your experiences are like with the gameplay yourselves now that... Uh, some of you will be getting hands-on with the early access via EA Play. Like there, I tried to play the pass, and on 21, I would have made that pass, and it wouldn't have been a problem. Kane! Jesus Christ. That was a Harry Kane-esque shot that very nearly ended up with a Harry Kane-esque result as well. God, here comes Human Son. Half an hour to hold on for another point. Brentford did get a point in the previous match day weekend, so they're starting to pull away from us. They haven't... Oh, yes, Zachary. Brilliant save from Deli Alli's header. Brentford still haven't won a game. I just, I, I want to get a win before Brentford does. That is like the next hurdle for us. One challenge at a time. Oh! Carr's done it, saved again, but that was a save you would have expected him to make from that sort of range. I'm going to close down Son here. I probably shouldn't have. Not Son, Winks. Yes, burn it. Oh, it's just corner after corner for the. Opponents today, to be fair, it's like that in most games, actually. We do concede a lot of corners, but I guess we concede a lot of chances where we're relying on the goalkeeper making save after save, so it's not too much of a surprise, actually. Just worried about the potential for a handball or a square pass. That's going to be a goal kick, though. 22 minutes to hold on for a point. White down the line looking for Son. Scale does enough. Oh, does he? You are kidding me. Oh, God, get rid of it. No, he's offside. Please tell me he's offside. He missed anyway, but jeez. I think he missed anyway. Did the ball go in? It, dis it wasn't on my screen. It might have just disappeared. I mean, well offside. Oh! <sighs> oh, Jesus. Harry Winks going off and Giovanni Lo Celso coming on. They've taken Kane off for Dane Scarlett as well. Oh, panic over. My heart rate absolutely flew there for the entirety of that move from them. For the time being, still 1-1. Vasquez to Verlinden down the line. Eaton looking to get in behind Emerson here. Here's Vasquez. And Wills. And Segura. Looking for Pierce. Finding him well. Into the middle. <gasps> Eaton. Oh, God. That was a shot. Oh, no. Hugo Lloris with a big save. Oh, that was a shot from Eaton. And it's skewed to Vasquez, who's volleyed it superbly. Wonderful technique. But Hugo Lloris has made the stop. Oh, man. Eaton with the delivery. Willemson up. Away by Sanchez. Who's going to get to that first? For Linden's done well. Burn it. We'll work it out wide. To Eaton again. I'm not going to rush it. I'm not going to rush it. I'm not going to rush it. Oh, come on. Can you imagine if we score a winner now? No, that's terrible, mate. Why have you kicked that straight at the Tottenham man? Oh, God. No. No, please. Thank you, Carr. Oh, such a terrible pass. <sighs> Hearts racing again. Giovanni Lo Celso. Oh, no. Away. Away. Away again. Nicely done. Get to that Vasquez. Okay. So, hopefully, this means that we at least hold on to possession until the end of the game. And we don't concede. But a last-minute winner... 
could be a possibility here. Three minutes added on at the end of the game. Segura back. Wills through there. Eaton. Eaton from the edge of the box. Saved by Lloris. <sighs> Come on then. Come on then. I'm going to call someone short. And then I'm going to whip it in with Eaton instead. From open play. Can we do something here instead? Vasquez is up. Oh, Lucas with the ball down. Come on, ref. Oh, another point. Clearly, playing the slow measured way is the way forward. We were really good against Chelsea until they finally picked us apart. I got flustered against Palace and just threw my own tactical handbook out the window. We were calm, composed, slower against Tottenham and we could have won it at the end. We could have won it at the end. Just need to make sure that I'm as calm and composed as that. We had just as many chances as the opposition there. Oh. That was <laughs> very nearly accidentally did that. Just as many chances. Five shots to their six. I swear it said six shots in the other screen. Uh, oh, God. Five shots, three on target. They had six and six. <sighs> Another point. Another point. I don't know. I don't know whether I'm optimistic or not. I can't decide whether I think I'm going to lose every single game or whether I think we might turn it around later this season. 13 games without a win so far. We're a third of the way through the season, but this isn't the time to panic. We oh, I I think I there's a glimmer of faith still there. There's a glimmer of hope still there. We should have gone on to find a winner. We did really well to get back in the game is what we'll say. And we did do really well to get back in the game. Am I happy with the result? Against the best teams, you have to concentrate for 90 minutes. I, I say it was tough, but I thought the, the players battled well. We did. A point against Tottenham. Never would have thought that was possible before we started this episode. It would have been Palace that I hoped to get a point against. And then maybe... Defeat against Tottenham and Chelsea. So perhaps we've still come away from that episode with as many points as we perhaps expected to. And oh, six foot one, he might be decent, you know. And then they just, they just so happen to have come against players that we didn't expect them. Or sorry, against the teams that we didn't expect them to. We got anything from England, perhaps. 74 to 94 for Dexter Banks. I'm going to have to bring you up and see what you're like. 76.94 for Ethan Webster. We'll see what you're like. Only 200 grand. I'm going to say no for you then. We got a wonder kid in here somewhere. I'll give you a five foot six. No, I'm going to say no. I'm going to say no. Okay, let's see what those youngsters look like. Still bottom. Still two points behind Brentford. But the points tally is going up. The points tally is going up. Still on, only, still, seven points off the safety of 17th place. Not, there are loads of teams that are really struggling this season. So we've got a number of players in our youth set up now. Lennart Kuhn, we know, is a player that we're hoping to... It's just... Now, at five foot nine, I'm going to release him. He's not going to grow quickly enough or well enough to be good, decent at left back. And he's not going to be good enough at centre back either because he's five foot nine. Julian Graf, hopefully, oh, he's another player that's just like that. They're just not going to be good enough. I'm sorry. Right. Philip Lorenz, six foot six. Now, you could be good at centre back because you won't need, you absolutely won't need the, uh, the jumping. Centre back, please. Two weeks. That has massive promise. Massive promise. Although he's got, uh, was it high, high work rate? Sir, can't see his work. Oh no, there. Yeah, high high work rates at least. Okay, high high. That's fair enough. Stanley Price. Come on, grow a bit, please. Dexter Banks. Agility and balance. Again, we're getting a lot of similar players. Although technically, it looks like he's got some promise there. Dribbling's decent. Ball control's decent. Again, looking like he's more of a cam than a centre mid, but we've got a lot of cams on the way. So if I can just improve his passing, if we train him as a playmaker, then he could grow quite well, actually. We might be on to a winner there. Uh, Stefan Richter. Free kick accuracy is 61. Again, looks more like a cam with uh, good ball control and dribbling. 
Although with some pace, could be utilised that whilst he's crossing like 51. I might try and train him as a midfielder. Right, mid's just four weeks. He's left-footed. Let's train him as a left mid. And then we'll see what we can do from there. Uh, Nicolas Volta. There you go. There you go. That's some physicals that we can work with. Technically, he's rubbish. But look at the... Ta his tackling stats are much, much, much better. He might... Wing back. Full back. He might be really good. He might be really good, genuinely, at right back. Four weeks to right back. We might have a decent young defender to help grow. Yes. Ethan Webster. Five foot ten. Five foot ten. Uh, pace and dribbling. Again, looks more like a winger than anything else. I'll train him as a right mid. He's got five-star skills. Now, we will train him as a left mid. And then see what we can do there. But Nicolas Volta as a wing back. Pretty, pretty hopeful there. Pretty hopeful indeed. Okay. Okay, right. Tomorrow, Wolves, Newcastle, West Ham and Watford. Or Wolves, Newcastle and West Ham. And then the day after, Watford, Villa, Everton and Manchester United. Busy month of December. And I'm needing your transfer suggestions now. But having having what looks like might be a decent, a decent now go-to positive potential wing back in our youth setup means maybe we can spend a bit more... Maybe we can spend a bit more on someone else for the first team in the transfer window. But wing back and centre back and the young centre back at six foot six as well. Wing back and centre back are certainly the areas that I need to improve. Uwe Martin and Burnett are higher rated, but Burnett is just so slow that he just he's never in the right place at the right time. Grogan, are you quicker? He's much quicker. I might try Grogan for a bit. Just because he's quicker, even though he's not as good. He's still only got 58 acceleration, but even though he's not as good technically, maybe Grogan, maybe Grogan might be worth a go. Just to see if A, we can get some growth out of him, and B, he might be in the right place a bit more often. Oh, but thrilled with the point against Spurs. And with, again, over the next couple of episodes, apart from Everton and Man United at the end of the second episode, in the month of December, there are potentially some winnable games there. Now that we think we found a play style there's potentially some winnable games that Wolverhampton Wanderers are top of the league I've just noticed what the shit's happening there 10 wins from 13 games give yourself a headache <laughs> oh my god Wolverhampton Wanderers are the surprise package this season outrageous I say Man United are also yet to lose a game as well Man United still unbeaten this season. They are. Man United going for an invincible season. Jesus, it's getting tasty at the top. Hopefully, we can make it tasty at the bottom as well. At the minute, it's a bit bland and we're looking out of it. But all it takes is a, a run of results. Two wins in the next eight. And a couple of draws in there as well. And we're right back in the fight. The fire still burns. The survival hopes still live by a thread, but they're still alive. The W stood for wow for Steven Bergwijn, but maybe wins are on the way. Come on, boys. I'll see you tomorrow.